Hi, everybody. We are here with you to take a look at our um, next step in our series, which is my treasured possession. And we go back to the Old Testament to set up the story of um, salvation history with God and God's people. And this week, we have the beginning of the story of Abraham, although in this beginning of the story, Abraham is Abram, which is a little confusing, but we'll uh, we'll tell you about that as we go on. So now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Iran. Abram took his wife, Sari, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for these stories of um, our forebears in the faith way, way, way back in the history, um, the written history of you with your people. Um, and we know that that some of these stories we have in detail um, and that other stories are long lost and not and long forgotten, but not, of course, lost to and forgotten by you. Um, so we give you thanks for your faithfulness, not only to Abram, um, but to all of our unnamed sisters and brothers since the beginning of time, um, whom you have chosen to be your people. And we ask these things in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, so I don't remember, was it you who asked me to wear a blue today or did I ask you? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good color here, so it works. When, uh, as my wife tells me, blue and gray go together nicely. So uh, yep. we'll keep doing the blues here. Yeah, and my wife tells me, quit wearing t-shirts. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think you mentioned last Sunday, and then just uh, I think uh, the Sunday before, I asked the same, and that is uh, the two questions we should ask with each of these stories is uh, what does the story reveal to us about who God is? And the other uh, question or whatever shape or form you put it in is what is God's relationship to the people uh, in the story or how do the people in the story relate to uh, the God who uh, calls them to do great things or on the way there? Yeah. So I, I, that's, I would like to start there and just say, what does the story reveal to us about who God is? And I mean, the obvious to me is, um, at a, as a 75-year-old, I'm thinking, you know, that feels like toward the end of, of life for me, but uh, it doesn't seem that way with God's calling to Abraham. At age 75, uh, you don't know what he's been doing the last 74, but now at 75, he receives this uh, overwhelming calling uh, to take... Uh, his people and establish something brand new in a place he's never been before. <clears throat> so uh, I take from that that uh, God's plan is bigger than we can see and God has means that we don't have access to and what God desires to do, God will do. Yeah, and I thank you for bringing that up because that um, that frames this story for me well and you know the idea of what does this story say about God, what does this story say about us? Um, and, and maybe, you know, what I will use for this coming Sunday as well. As I look at it, um, 
what this story tells me about God is that it's God's intention to bless all the families of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, many, many things get in the way of that blessing um, because blessings have to be not only given, but received. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what is God's intention is not always what takes place because we refuse to receive the blessing right or um, never even hear of that it is something yeah. that we are, are being blessed yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean in your definition uh, I've, well let me kind of come at it from a different way and i'll let you define maybe for us blessing but sometimes blessing i think is seen as something material or something measurable or something in which we kind of we can put in the cupboard or in the bank or in our garage or something you know we say wow we have been blessed greatly here but i don't think that's the intent of this blessing here do you no and i i would you know i, I would have to think about this more but my first inclination is that that what god intends is that all people live self-consciously under god's care and guidance yeah um, that's what I see as God's blessing is that that we be content and committed to living under God's care and guidance. and and that um, and and I would emphasize that word we um, that that we understand that God's care and guidance is not just for us but for others. Um, yeah. And as as you said, you know, helping others to to hear that and to know that, um, and then helping others, you know, to, you know, to, to live in, in that way, you know, to, um, to live with the kind of fullness that God intends. Yeah. And to know, uh, yesterday I was at a care center and, and uh, up in the memory care, especially section of this care center. And you look at some of the, the people there and uh, you can see why it's so, they, they get so easily forgotten. They fall to the cracks, they're ciphers, you know, and it's, um, it's, it's sad. And yet what I came to remind them of yesterday, again, that, um, and, I, and I read from Isaiah that even if a mother, you know, would forget her child, God will not forget you. Uh, and to say that to each one of them and, and to see a couple of smiles come across their faces, but just to know that they are still being blessed by God's presence, that they still have a relationship that God has not forgotten or abandoned or neglected. Yeah. Uh, and to me, that is a, that's quite a blessing to know that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. It really is. So on to the question of what does this story tell us about um, humanity? What does this story, as you look at it, Craig, tell us about ourselves? Well, as a 75 year old myself, I would say uh, I admire how Abram, from what we're told here, uh, just said, okay, you know, uh, here we go. Sarah, guess what? We're, we're going tomorrow. We're, we're going on a trip. God has called me and us to begin something brand new, of which I don't know where it will end. I don't know how big it will be or what it will require of us. But uh, Abraham said, yep, I'll, I accept that calling. Um, I, I think in my own situation, I probably would have struggled a little bit more if I said to Cindy, you know, tomorrow morning, uh, Cindy, guess what? Uh, God called me in the night and, and uh, we're supposed to sell the house and uh, take a few possessions along and we're headed off to a new place. I, I think there would be a lot of conversation there. But I admire how, um, one, how God calls Abram. I don't know how God selects sometimes. But Abraham must have been being groomed the last 74 years, I'm guessing, for something like this. And that he accepts in a very willing way and goes on a long journey for the rest of his life. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think what this says about us is that God uses us, um, yeah. you know, to achieve God's ends. Um and I think sometimes the mistake that we make is that we we wait for that one big call um, mm. and we wait for clarity um, to know exactly what we are to do. Um, and I don't think that's always how the call of God comes. Um, you know, I, I think God works through us in 
um, in big ways, like with Abram and in smaller ways. Mm -hmm. And I think it's helpful to remember that not all of the stories of God and God's people are included in scripture. Um, And that as God was working with Abram, God was also working with countless other people at at that time. Um, And I've mentioned before to people that the the book um the purpose driven life is not my favorite book um precisely oh because I, yeah i disagree with the idea that god has this one you know thing for our life and it's our yeah. job to find that one thing um and i i i see it very differently i mean it, um our job is to see on a day to day basis how um the world's need matches up with our gifts yeah Um, i think also um i I don't know what if abraham were to write a faith story but to have a relationship with god who called him now to this new adventure uh there had to be a lot of trust there had to be some experience there leading up to that where where uh he came to the conclusion that uh, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I trust that God will supply the resources to make it happen. So whether it's 75 or, you know, young Samuel or young Joseph or whatever, uh, the age doesn't really matter. It's about who will supply the resources to make this event come about. Yep. yep. And I think I'm guessing that's what Abraham came to that conclusion or Abram came to that conclusion in the same way. I, I don't have the resources to make it happen, but if you say so, if you're going to make me something that can be a blessing to all, all the families of the earth, uh, I can only imagine how you can do it, but I can't figure out on my own how to do it. Yeah, and I, I like in this story where it opens up saying, now the Lord said to Abram, and later on it says the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, and, yeah. and there's no detailing concerning um how Abram knew that it was God who was speaking, um, what it meant that God appeared to him. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I like that it leaves that vague Um, and and not just vague, but completely unexplained. Yeah. Um, You know, because it doesn't leave us, you know, wanting the same thing that Abram had, you know, like when Paul is struck blind, you know, it's like, oh, if Jesus would just appear to me in the same way he appeared to Paul. Um, and in this case, um, we don't know what how God appeared to Abram. We don't know how God spoke to Abram, and we don't know how Abram discerned that it was God. Yeah. All we know is that uh, it happened. And I, I guess the proof would be there in the what we see has happened uh, when you trace the history back even uh, if you had a map it would be fun to show i think people just the distance uh, that abram sarah and uh, lot and the rest traveled i mean it was hundreds of miles yeah and and you begin to wonder too you know why would god make them go so far was there something to be learned on the journey and i'm guessing yes you know again it would be god's provisions you know where are we going to get something to eat? Well, uh, once again, I'm guessing there was some kind of, of uh, moments when they said, well, you know what, I think God will provide and it did happen. Yeah. And so um, maybe that's part of the long journey. And maybe for each of us, as we trace our own journey backwards to, you know, when we had a calling at whether it was to be a pastor or a teacher or a police officer or janitor, whatever, um, there we go. Some nice things happened along the way that we can look back on and say, you know, I, we we bumped into some of those moments when we weren't sure how we were going <clears> to <throat> make it through the through this deep valley, and yep. and we did. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So the original call to Abram mm-hmm. came in the city of Ur in Chaldea, um, and then up to Haran in Mesopotamia, um, and from there down into Egypt and then back over into the land of Canaan. So Mm -hmm. most folks have some sense of, you know, the immensity of this area. Um, I mean, it was, it was a hike. Yeah. 
But again, uh, there, there must be some reason for that. Uh, and um, I'm guessing part of the reason was that so God could continually show Abram, Sarah, and the family there, the, uh, uh, his provisions would be there for them, whatever it took. And then I, I love too the, the faithfulness that uh, was uh, indicated there about building an altar. And to me, the altar was a place where you go and uh, offer your praises and your thanks for all that has been given to you. And so Abram was faithful to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, you know, and again, it's, um, it's like last week, the story of the flood, you know, this story of um, Abram and Sarah being called and sent by God is one that you know, so familiar to us that we sometimes even neglect to listen to it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like every story in scripture, I, in part because, you know, this is a story told in and to um, an unfamiliar people in an unfamiliar place, there's always just so much more for us to hear and learn. Yep. Maybe part of the long journey too is that maybe uh, Abram needed a reminder, you know, calling. I don't think it's a one-time shot. In my life, I don't, I, I know that there were Sunday school teachers that were trying to remind me early on that maybe I should consider something to be a pastor or parish work or church work, but uh, I wasn't listening to very well then, and it was a time when I just ignored most of that. Looking back, though, there were voices there that were speaking, I, I think, in some faithful, godly way. And uh, maybe Abram needed those voices along the way too, just as a little reminder to say, you know what? <laughs> it feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere, but there is a destination and there is a finish line here and uh, you'll get there, but it might seem like you're a long way off from it now. Yep, it's good to be reminded that um, not all of the, the stories about Abram and God are included in scripture. Yeah, very true. That there's a lot more that was going on. Well, a good place, I think, to um, to shut it down. Okay. Um, so everybody have a, a good week. And it may be our last, um, maybe, maybe not, but it may be our last shot at warmth, real warmth this week um, mm. before we start getting uh, more deeply into fall. Yeah. Okay. Take care, everybody. Enjoy.